Hey guys, welcome back to my vlog. It is September 13th, 2023. And uh, what the hell, we're back. My yeah. vlog. <laughs> so, Red, how you been? Uh, okay. Good. Very good, very good. Good to see everybody in the room. Whether you guys are watching this, watching this live, or you're watching this uh, uh, after it's live, um, hey, it's good to see you guys again. It's been a while, so things have been busy, and uh, which is good, and things have been slow, which is not good. Um, but I uh, just want to say hi to everybody, Devin Mor Morell. Devin Morell, it's good to see you. Uh, it'll be good to see Devin. He's coming back on the tour. You just uh, bought tickets the other day. I was on the phone. Uh, going to come out here and see the crime tour so good glad that be good good to have you uh have you with so um let's see who else is in here today tim peroni luminous grin sean pender outfit boss homan sanders good to see you guys julia m van pasterman dave wow a whole lot of people here today christopher mims wow what's going on man good to have you with us again uh, I remember that name, Chicago Joe, Robert Greco, Barlight Broker. It's good to see all of you guys. Ryan Brown, everybody's here. Great. So we're here to talk about how mobsters die. How mobsters die. When it comes to mind, what comes to mind when I say that? This is, this, before I ask a question, this is a conversation that Red and I were having the other day. And I thought, actually last night, and I thought, you know, this might be something that we could talk about. So, um, so yeah, what comes to mind, Red? Uh, what comes to mind is what we talked about last night, how it affected your life. Losing oh, yeah. A lot of I mean, but in, in general, you say, how did monsters die? You know, three. The first thing three. that comes to my mind, either they died in a hospital bed, or they died like other people did, or they got lead poisoning. Yeah, right. That's it. You know, it was concrete boots or you know, hospital or home. I mean, I, I don't know. Where else? How else would monsters die? Right. <laughs> and we started up that conversation and I thought how morose of a subject, you know, that we talk about. And uh, but then again, the things that we talk about on mob vlog and that we've talked about in the past have been pretty. Uh, I don't know. They've been they've been, you know, you know, different things, different, you know, what the hell. And it brought to mind uh, a subject. And I said, oh, Al Capone syphilis, mm, Al Capone syphilis. That's not a good way to go. Um, not, I mean, not that's not a good way. I supposedly got that in the brothels, working in the brothels as a bouncer back at way back in the day. And it just was when he was 16, 17. <laughs> that goes untreated and it gets into your brain and it screws with you. And and then we brought up the movie uh, uh, Al Capone, the recent one that came out, what, a few years ago anyway. And it's it's literally about the last year of his life when they let him out of prison and uh, he got to spend it with his family at home in uh, Florida, which, which was recently for sale, by the way. Again, what a, what a crazy way, or, you know, to go. I mean, and you start thinking about it going, geez, you know, people go and it's the older you get this, the more you start noticing going, what, what the hell? This person's not here now. This person's not here now. This person's not, I lost another person that uh, was, was quite close business wise. And, um, you know, it's just like you're looking around going, what the hell? You know, it's uh, it, maybe that's why I didn't like that movie. So I didn't. I was kind of turned off by it. I thought, eh. you know, why watch some guy debilitate mentally? And it's just, you know what I mean? It's almost like watching a movie like Hostel, you know, a slice and dice movie, a slasher. You know, you just sit there. I don't want to watch people get cut up for an hour and a half. That's just not, you know. I mean, a psychological thriller, that's fine. But uh, yeah, so Scott H., good to see you. The Bob life is a dead end. Yes, indeed. Um, I would I would say it's it's not a it depends on how you played it and when when you played it too, I guess. If if you played it anyway. So bad retirement plans. Yeah, yeah bad retirement plans. Red, you gotta talk to the people for a minute. I have to uh do something quickly. Okay. Well, folks, Adam is back. <laughs> and 
He wants me to take a little bit of time to say hi to you. Tone, um, what does it say here? Al Capone home got demolished. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. Thank you. Thank you, Tone. You know, Van Pasterman, Adam and I were talking about that last night. What percentage of the mobsters died outside of prison or by natural causes? And, um, or like people I knew, like Jimmy Couture, 1978, he was shot down. I don't know, Hubbard. I went through a list of people that I knew that were murdered. So actually knew them. It was a different story. Studio apartment, Christopher. Christopher in a studio apartment with no money. Ryan Brown, Whitey Bulger, <laughs> coming back to him. Ninety percent of the time, it is. Kraut, it's it's uh, lead poisoning is often fatal. I can only think of a few that survived. One in my in the back of my mind is Joe Colombo. But I really don't follow the New York stuff that well. Mickey Griggs Jr., how many um, how many bombs, bombings? Lots of them. Lots of them. Outfit boss, uh, how's John Drummond doing? He appears to be doing pretty good. I saw a video of him uh, that was done about eight months ago. He's really aged a lot, and he's sitting in a chair. He doesn't get up, and it was about Helen Brock, which I'm doing a show on Monday. I'm having a live show. I was going to drop that for everybody, and then I decided to have a live show. It got postponed, postponed, but I think you guys want to see Adam more than you did me. So... That's why I told Adam, I said, let's do it. And Adam's back. He's here. There we go. Well, he was back for a minute. He's not used to do, not used to doing the shows anymore. He's coming back in to the studio. There he is. I'm so sorry. I pushed the wrong button there, Red. Uh, that, that's the reason you guys haven't seen me because um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of a friend and he's 88 years old and he's not able to take care of himself anymore and the guy's on social security and it, it's, a, it's a really bad situation. The guy's in the VA and that was the, he was a veteran. You guys, well, if you've watched the show, you've seen Jack. He's been on the show before. We've interviewed him about Peter Lawford and uh marilyn monroe and working with bob hope and all the craziness but uh anyway just taking care of the guy and it's so i'm trying to set up appointments to get his eyes fixed and it's crazy it's crazy i get i get 15 calls a day from it. it's just <sighs> isn't jack getting a little bit see now it's a lot, man. It's so much. One minute he's fine, and he's you know you, you, you're talking about everyday things, and then a few minutes later, it's this place is there, they're they're doing things and experiments to people here, and you're just going, what the, f you know what? I mean, it just ah, uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, this is Cindy Workman. This is a nice surprise. It's, it's you're a nice surprise to have you in today, Cindy. So, um, anyway, Red, we were talking about, uh, well, we were on Al Capone for a minute there. <laughs> and then we were talking about pretty morose things and, and um, death in general. And then, then I got the call. Anyway, this is a, it's a pretty wild, crazy time right now, guys. Big Mo, hello, Adam. Hello, Red, back together again. Yes, good to see you, Big Mo. Um, Good to see you. So, 
guys, um, what, what, what is this? What is this, Mr. Hoffman? Uh, Mr. Hoffman FD, Red, do you recall an outfit firebombing at a pinball warehouse in Oregon? I accidentally walked into the back and they sat a guy down in a chair and surrounded him. A week later, the place was torched. I don't know anything that happened in Oregon. <laughs> I didn't say Oregon, dude. I, I misread that. Ogden. <laughs> Oregon. Where's my brain? Ogden. In Ogden. It's a warehouse on Ogden. In Ogden on Ogden? Yes. No. no. I never know. That had to be in the 90s or later. Ah. Because I would have known about it. Um, was What year was that, Mr. Hoffman? Yeah, the crowd. I know. I, I'll say everything wrong. <laughs> what, what what the hell? We haven't done it in a while. Fancy Brady, that butcher boy. Where, here you go. So, <laughs> up every word. Early 90s. I wasn't there yeah. then. No. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, you guys, um, if you come out here to Vegas, we do have the mob tour running and the crime tour running. That is going and it is a thing. Um, ask Devin Morrell. He's been on one of them and it's coming out for the other. So what an interesting bit of history in the uh, in the tour. So, um, wow. Was the outfit, was hey, Red, was the uh, outfit biker gang involved with any outfit bombings? Uh, I don't know if it was an outfit biker gang. But um, a Ruben Sturman brought in some Hell's Angels from uh, uh, Arizona. And uh, they bombed the porn shops. They bombed a, bombed a lot of them. They didn't bomb mine, but they bombed Sturman's. He, he wanted to get his uh, stores back. That's Junior. His father was uh, deceased at that time. He was trying to get everything back. But everybody put their everything in their name, and they said, "We're not giving it back to you." No. Um, <clears throat> they went, if they didn't blow themselves up in the car for being inept at what they were doing, which several of them did, and they turned state's evidence, they went to prison. Everybody went to jail over it. Um, in case you didn't know this, Red, uh, I'm out on parole. That's a thing. Again? Again. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't get enough of the food in there, man. <laughs> Go back for more. Valmore. Okay. I was late. What a nice surprise. A nice surprise to see you, Valmore. Um, hope you're having a great day. Kim Jong Ung, all rats. What the hell? You gotta get a different haircut there, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Adam is not on parole. He flew the coup. Of course he did. <laughs> oh, man. How mobsters die. Everything. Anything, right? I mean, anything could happen. I never really talked about Frank Collada um, and what happened with, uh, with Frank. Um, people ask questions. They do. They, they, they come on the tour. And you guys watch the show, and it's so it's crazy how many people watch this and come on the tour because of it. Um, and when they're on the tour, Adam cries. It amazes. I don't cry on the tour. I don't cry on the tour. You're talking about Frank. I've had people cry on the tour. That happens. That's crazy. I mean, when that happens to me, I, I think that at the end of the tour, people sit there and tears are running down their face, and I'm going. Stop telling stories is that moving you know that you could take people make them laugh make them cry make them you know which is i guess it's what you've been been doing my whole life you know doing magic is being a storyteller so i mean that's what it what it is speaking of i learned a few card tricks over the past uh -huh. few weeks yeah um adam you're you're taking this mob thing too serious parole <laughs> Oh, uh, Adam thought Adam left with Carmine. Carmine's gone, so's Adam. <laughs> He's over there now. I'm over here now. <laughs> Except I never here. miss Carmine, but I miss Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Chain Weaver's in here. That's great. Um, yeah, Adam cries when he realizes he should have charged more. 
man, <laughs> you know, at 125 bucks a crack. I, you know, couldn't have. Devin, Devin cried on the tour. See, it did happen. Now that's a grown man talking about he cried on the tour. It happens. It's like uh, very moving when you you tell it's it's the same thing with the crime tour, Devin. Where do you you experience the emotions and the? It's a really moving. It's again, it's a moving tour. You have to. It makes the it makes it more interesting. You know, when you could tell stories that people can relate to and you know feel and have a sense of it so uh so hit the like yeah guys hit the like button please don't forget to uh hit the like button um smash it there's a uh, hundred of you guys in here right now and we're only 15 minutes into the show so be sure to hit that it helps the uh algorithms on youtube <clears throat> we're getting a storm here <laughs> i told frank that one day i went over to his place he lived in an apartment up in uh, the the uh, Country Club Towers uh, off of Desert Inn. He lived up in an apartment there. <clears throat> and I wasn't anything fancy. And I went over there and, and I was telling, we were all excited about, you know, the channel. We we're just starting things up. And I, I said to him, you know, Frank, the more that you interact with the, you know, people on the channel, the better the algorithms will run in the, you know, YouTube's system. And he looked at me and he said, you're pretty smart. What do you know about these algorithms? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I said, you know, the more people interact, the computer knows, and then it shows it to more of the people. And then that's how the software works. And he sat there and goes, you really know what algorithms are? <laughs> it was pretty funny. I whacked the button like a ham sandwich. All right. Luminous grin. Good, 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 good for that. Uh, Red, if you happen to be scrolling through Amazon Prime and you see a movie with the great William Defoe, yes, and it's called Inside, do yourself a favor, don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it. I already had it queued up for tonight. Don't watch it. Listen, there's there's one on a Netflix called The Platform. Any of you watched The Platform? Because when you starts out, you're sitting there and you're wondering what the hell's going on. I think they made it in Spain or Poland or some European country because it's dubbed over. Uh, but the, they're, they're in this room and it's got a hole in the middle and the floor and a hole up in the ceiling. And there's levels. And, and they wake up and the guy's like, I'm on level 34. <laughs> you know, and you're like and looking around. Well, what the hell's that all about? You know, and then the light turns green and then this platform comes lowering down i saw it adam did you watch that yes i did oh you didn't watch that whole thing yes i did you didn't watch that whole thing tell me you didn't it it went from floor to floor it went all over the place yeah it and was the ending of it was really kinky <laughs> kinky okay weird. very weird yeah well, so yeah. It, uh, anyway, uh, that uh, it's about as much of a waste of time as the um, the uh, movie Inside. So, there's your movie update from Mob Vlog for you. Guys. <laughs> now, in case uh, in case uh, you haven't been uh, sitting around on Wednesdays getting the munchies, um, whew, I found a killer instant pot recipe the other day. Tony Ducks, Rip Frank. Yeah, it's been three years. You realize that? Three years, man, since we uh, lost Frank. Three years. So when did Frank pass? Um, he passed August 20th of 2020. 2020. Yeah. Yep. So that was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> If Fred says it's kinky, it must be way out there. No kidding. That this come from the smut peddler. It's a <laughs> kinky ending. You know, holy cow, man. What does this guy mean by that? Yeah, go watch the movie and then you'll know what he means by kinky ending. I think I don't know if that includes cannibalism, but uh, you know, there's it's gotta be out there if it's red. <laughs> I visit graves in such neon vacation as a way to pay my respects. And I plan on hitting Frank's in October. Any family 
Any family have objection? I know sometimes they do. Well, Neon Vacation, here's the thing about that. <laughs> here's the thing about that. It's not marked. How can I say that? <laughs> can I say that? It's a polite way to say it's it. It's in an unknown location. Right. How's that? It's in an unknown location. They didn't build a monument. <laughs> no, it's in an unknown location. And, and you actually, you get, you get, Devin will tell you this too, Devin Morrell, you get the story on the tour of what happened. Oh, yeah. you, get the whole, you get the whole story of what happened. I do it on the tour. I'm not going to uh, do it on the channel. That's special for, you know, the tour. But um, yeah, pornologist, that's not a smut peddler. You're a pornologist. Yes, <laughs> pornologist, dude. Oh my gosh. How the hell did this happen? I mean, seriously, Red, how did this happen? It just happens. Frank lived a lot longer than he would have if he didn't decide to roll Gomp. I'm with you on that. I think that, uh, yeah. Scott H., Frank's grave is not where you think. It's true, Scott H. It's a nice way of putting it. Mm. I thought it was at Woodlawn. Neon Vacation? No, that is not correct there's conflicting information on the internet about it uh you can go to websites and look up some of these and it's uh yeah ryan brown adam i found a way to turn to take turn i found a way to take turn the coffee with colada jingle as a ringtone no did you really you you made it as a that's hilarious as a ringtone i think there's like there's isn't there something like zedge or something on the phone an app where you can customize ringtones yeah. I should do that. That's funny. I should do that. Um, thank, you, thank you, Ryan, for the uh, super sticker. Christopher Urich, uh, Urich, sorry. Uh, was Frank in a movie with Sylvester Stallone as a mob boss? No. Uh, Frank was in a movie with Robert De Niro called Casino. And uh, he just, he plays a hitman in the movie. So... Cindy Workman, it's in a special location. That's correct. That is correct. Um, yes. The location of his choice before he passed on. That's, that's he decided true. that's where he wanted to be. That's true. This is all true. The crowd, MCs, fighting each other makes as much sense as police departments fighting each other. MCs fighting each other? Hmm. What does that mean? I don't know what MCs are. I don't know. Why well, is he? No, he doesn't mean it. I don't know what he means. Motorcycle clubs. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. That that that, that makes that makes sense. Motorcycle clubs fighting each other, except me. Um, <laughs> motorcycle clubs. Everybody's got it. Thank you guys. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't because they they offer protection as well. Right. I mean, in in a different way, but it's it's all of the one you know yeah we won't kill you if you share your drugs with us <laughs> exactly now you just can't leave exactly art <laughs> now you just can't leave if you ever want i can walk you through it it's a youtube video has audio you can isolate it and turn it into an iphone ringtone through an app called garage band right. uh, for, for iphone ryan i am a android person i'm did you notice I said person? I didn't say dude. I said I'm, I'm a person. Adam is politically correct. <laughs> Shit. Um, oh, yeah. Just like the mob. Same chick. Exactly. So I remember Frank singing Coffee with Colada in one episode. So, Julia, you're having the... Um, you're having the... Um, Flashback. Oh, I want to say Mandalorian effect. You're having the... Um, the Mandela effect. What the hell? The Mandalorian effect. <sighs> too much Xbox, Red. Too too much with the PlayStation and the Xbox and the ooh Starfield. <laughs> what one word? Starfield. Holy shit! Um, you gamers know what I'm talking about. Android's the way to go, Adam. Yes, Julian. Yes. But hey, Ryan, I'm not knocking it into the Apple. That's cool, man. I mean. My wife likes Apple, and it's just too proprietary for me. So, well, anyway. So, Red, 
talking about mobsters dying. Kind of a morose subject once again. You know, it really is. You want to talk about my buddy Jack? He's you know him, it's different. If you know them, it, it affects you. It's like when Tony died, when Tony got murdered. If you know him, it really affects you. If you don't know him, it's like, I didn't know the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. When they die, it's just, just have, too much. Like, it, make a piece of your heart with them. Ay, 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 ay. Um, LOL, the mafia is still around, but not like we knew them. Yeah, you know, everything's different. You know, things are, aren't going to be the same and connected like they were back in the day. I mean, that's never going to happen again. You can't get away with anything. I mean, you want to you want to do some some crime it's cyber crime that's the way to go steal identities you know empty bank accounts that's what i'm talking about and all in from the comfort of your bedroom you know why you don't even have to go out jumping fences no <laughs> <sighs> okay they're all lawyers politicians and businessmen who do their dirty deeds legally yeah or illegally i mean you know but it's, it's what it is. I mean, MCs, motorcycle clubs are not the same as 40, 50 years ago. Too many young jerks looking to be somebody. Sad. Yeah. PSJ <laughs> or politics. Yeah. They go one of two ways because that's that's what it's true. Bobby Bag of Donuts. They're all lawyers, politicians, and uh, businessmen. You know, it's it's politics. It's all of it. Like I say, you know, you want to you want to you want to see the mobsters in in this country. Uh, you can dig them all up right there at uh, Washington D.C. The District of Criminals, because that's where they're all hanging out. Every last one of them. Yep. So, um, very few mob bosses died natural deaths. If they did, it was in prison. Yeah. yeah. No, I can I can say Tony Accardo, uh, Tony Accardo died natural, didn't he? So did so did um, uh, Louis Eveli. He died of cancer of the pancreas. Uh, so did Joe Ferriola. The list goes on. There's a lot of them that went home and just died. Sure. And especially the ones that were in prison. Joe Iupa, compassionate release. He died sure. outside. Yeah. Yeah, compassionate release. Like Al Capone. But you know, you watch that movie with Al Capone and he's just losing it. And he's like, he's having hallucinations. And, he, and you're thinking, shit, now, now I know why the judge let him out for the last year. The hell difference does it make? <laughs> you're going to sit there and go all nutty in your cell or you're going to sit there and go all nutty at home. You know, one of the two. Well, not only that, they didn't, have a, 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 they didn't want to pay for his medical. And they just figured, eh, he's no harm anymore. Just let him go home. Sure. Guys, you know, that's it. Gambino died of a heart attack. There he is, another one. Yeah. Hey, did you watch uh, McMillions yet? I, you didn't watch McMillions yet. Man, if you guys haven't watched McMillions, it's on Max. I'm telling you, they, they ought to be sponsoring the show for us saying this kind of stuff, man. McMillions <laughs> is a podcast. It's a podcast. I went down this rabbit hole on, um, I think it's on, no, it's on Max. And uh, oh my gosh. Talk about good. I mean, really, really well done and well put together. And I guess what the the whole deal, uh, the whole thing is, you guys remember the McDonald's uh, Monopoly pieces? Well, there was a guy stealing the main ones, like the main, you know, winners, the million-dollar winners. And it's like all middle-aged Italian white guys are getting <laughs> winning these things. They're winning the McDonald's. Yeah. They won the prize because they would be on the cups. It's it crazy, man. Like what? Yeah, yeah. And they they selling on the, the French fries on the French fries. They didn't want yeah, the French fries. Yeah, yeah. You peeled them. Everybody collected them, and you had the map, and you put on the board. You know that you stuck them to. And uh, these guys were. It was all mob related. All mob. You know that's what. That's how it goes. The what mob guys are, are the only guys that won. <laughs> Shit, you know, hey, we got to spread these pieces across the country. You can't just be guys in New Jersey with. <laughs> million dollar prizes what's the chances of that happening when it looked bad in the movie when it looked bad yeah. what they did was uh they went to a black lady and they let her win yeah. and they split the profits with her 
Oh no, it was two. She get fifty thousand dollars a year, and the guy's like, "All right, so you're gonna give me twenty five thousand of that." Oh well, then she finds out she's got to pay the taxes, and she's like, "Well, that's ten thousand taxes. I'm only getting fifteen thousand at the end of the day. You know, he's getting twenty five thousand. I'm getting fifteen thousand. Yeah, I'm getting, you know. So yeah, it's it's a great it's a great great um um podcast or series if you want to watch it on on uh max anyway if there was money involved the mob would find a way to get a piece yeah no pun intended you know the yeah. piece of the yeah. <laughs> yeah it's crazy uh pretty crazy anyway uh there was a town that changed its name to little chicago up in northern wisconsin Joseph Johnson. I did not know that. Little I Chicago. heard about it. I was never really? there. There's a town called Little Chicago. I got to go to Maps and look. <laughs> no, man. Really? I, Little Chicago? They changed their name to it. Let's see. Little Chicago. Julian? Damn. The name of it's called McMillions. Yeah, McMillions. Is and you'll the... like it. You'll really like it, Julie. I think you can listen to it on Spotify too, or you know, when I'm sure the pod. I didn't listen to the podcast. I watched the the uh, series on Max, but yeah, it's freaking freaking good. Yeah. Speaking of one of the mobsters in the thing, he ends up getting a. I don't want to spoil anything, but he ended up in a car accident <laughs> and died. So there's another one of ways that mobsters go, I guess. Um. <laughs> Oh, this is a, yeah. So there's a little Chicago, um, and they have a, a grocery store there, and they even have a post office there, Red. It's called Little yeah. Chicago, Wisconsin. They even have a post office there. Different zip code. <laughs> what, what, what town doesn't have a post office, Red? Uh, um, you know, we had somebody come on the mob tour last week. I didn't get the ch chance to put the um, the video up because the audio is pretty, pretty bad in it. Um, 24 years old, came out here and did the mob tour and loved it. Drug drug his dad onto the mob onto the tour because he watches. Nice this. kid, very yeah. nice. This is gives me hope that there's actually younger people out there that are still interested in uh, in history, you know, and especially this this type of history. So, um. I'm 35 and would be in a motorcycle club if I had another bike. Christopher Urich. Hey, do you really have to have a bike to be in a motorcycle club? Yes. You do? Yes. You can't, like, just drive along in your car with them? No. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Even as a small car, like those little, like, eco cars, like the golf cart cars, those little smart cars that look... And then you see him in an accident, and you're like, that's a stupid car. <laughs> I had a 59 Harley FLH. Full dress hog. Nice. Not that I didn't know anything about bikes. I'm just saying nice. because It was a heavy son of a gun. <laughs> I rode on a motorcycle one time. One time. And uh, um, the tire was flat. I, I drove it around the block. One time, and man, I shouldn't even have done that. I, I'm surprised I didn't wipe out. I really am. When I was, that was probably when I was like 18, 19 years old. I got on a three wheeler, you know, those ATV three wheelers that they outlawed. This is probably 25 years ago. And I ass over tea kettle, handlebar went through my knee. I think I still got the mark on my knee, the scar. Anyway, I'm bleeding out of my leg. 20 years later, I'm standing in Utah. The first one was in Indiana. This is when I'm in Utah, and I'm looking at this four-wheeler going, man, it's got four wheels. That has got to be a hell of a lot more stable than three. And so I rode around on that. And then Ouch. I shattered my wrist. <laughs> Put me out of the magic business for uh, for the, for the um, season. Uh, that was during Christmas, all the Christmas shows, all the Christmas. Unbelievable. Laugh out loud, Adam. I could see Adam in a smart car. You'd be like the clowns at the circus. The little car pulls up and the 15 clowns get out. That's what it'd be like. 
I fell off my wife's Honda scooter. Oh my God. <laughs> Sean Pender. And he admits it online. He's admitting it to everybody. His wife's Honda scooter. Really? You wiped on a scooter, but you know what those, if you know anything about, um, if you know anything about um, mechanics and in engineering, the bigger the wheel, the more gyroscopic that it is. The smaller the wheel, the less. So the big bike with the big wheel it holds you up balanced. The little one, your center of gravity goes way up. I mean, you just have to hit a pebble with one of them tiny little wheels, man, and you're you're done. So, oh man. I, I'd like to drive a car along the motorcycle club. I think it'd be cool, man. You know, I'd even take the muffler off so it's real loud like the motorcycle. Red, you with me? I'm with you a thousand percent. <laughs> Do you? You I'm, read looking, I'm looking what yeah. Matt says here. No kidding. You always heard about the bigger clubs like Outlaws and Hell's Angels. I never heard about the Eagles until you told DC me. DC Eagles? If you were riding, you knew about them. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. They were brother 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 clubs with the outlaws and the yes. hell's henchmen were brother clubs with the hell's angels neither the eagles or henchmen wanted to be with them either of them wow dc eagles man they were on the 60s when i was around <laughs> sure sure um yeah that's smaller smaller motorcycle clubs out here the crowd has him out where's he from again pennsylvania philadelphia who the crowd? I don't recall. I thought it was somewhere east. Um, they got cars that look like motors. They have cars that look like motorcycles. You gotta be. Yeah. And that spam, thankfully. Everything is the same. Off subject again. I like it. Yeah, Sonny Zaro. It's always going to be off subject. I think we're going to stay on subject on this show. Come on. I mean, weird sidecars. They they have a, they have a car that looks like a motorcycle. That's what I want, Mickey. Then I can hang out with the motorcycle clubs in my. Oh, are you car. talking about that train? What do they call it? A Tyrannosaurus or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. That was what was like a the, the big the, the big uh the big uh, uh tricycle? The giant tricycle. Yep. I don't think I could drive one of those either, man. Slingshot, yeah, Christopher Mims. I see those slingshots all over town out here. They rent them out. Um, buy a motorcycle, Adam, get a sidecar for red. <laughs> red can put those goggles on with that, with that leather hat with the goggles. <laughs> if he's driving. I'm not riding in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> Let him get a couple of years of business or experience first. Everybody stay off the sidewalks tonight. Adam and Red are coming down the street. <laughs> <laughs> or the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby the Vegas outlaws, Dutch. The outlaws uh, started the as outlaws the actually, Go ahead. I'm sorry. The outlaws started as the McCook County Outlaws. Yes. In McCook, Illinois. I was there. McCook County. McCook. McCook County. That was the county outlaws, but it was in McCook. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. They were the. McCook is a suburb. They were the Cook County outlaws. He, yes. he, he meant to put the motorcycle club, MC, forgot the space, I think. Okay. Yeah. The Cook County outlaws. Get a boss hog. Adam might as well be a, be a car. Get a boss hog? Adam might as well be a car. What's a boss hog? That must be some kind of bike, huh? I guess. Well, I'm six foot five. I'm a big dude, man. I need a big bike. Oh, yeah. In a motorcycle club. And if I'm going to be in a motorcycle club, then I get to get a leather jacket, too, with the emblem on the back. And I need to grow the handlebar mustache. I got to get rid of this. So it's And a brain bucket, for sure. <laughs> and a what? Brain bucket? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Oh shit! You, <laughs> um, you guys are going nuts here in the comment. Come to Sturgis during the rally, and you'll be driving next, next to bikers. Yeah, yeah. This is what I get. I I got a picture graphic in my mind, P Dog, of Adam with a painters. Oh man, those guys that ride with those bikes way the hell up here. That's gotta be the most uncomfortable shit. 
What a 30 percent up here. No, come on, man. No way. Um Luminous Grin. I witnessed Adam pull off an amazing U-turn on the crime tour. So I'll hop in the sidecar. Yeah, Luminous knows what he's talking about, man. I know how to drive. Uh, that's one thing I do know. I know that pretty, pretty damned well. But but riding on three wheelers or bikes, I don't know, you know. But if you got a sidecar, that's extra stability. It's like uh No, sidecars are harder to drive for me. Okay. Sidecars are harder to drive than motorcycles. Motorcycles, you can lean into the curve. Yeah. You lean into it. You got a sidecar on there, you ain't leaning into nothing. You're steering. Yeah. That's it. Like easy rider, Dennis. I Alford. had a sidecar, I know. After I tried it out, I went down the alley and I said, that's it. Put it in the garage and sold it. Oh, uh, like Easy Rider, Dennis Hopper. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Adam would need custom ape hangers because he's so tall. Why do they call them ape hangers, man? It sounds so racial. It sounds so no, it's racial. Not racial. Right? Ape hangers, man. It's because gorillas or apes. Okay. You know, because their arms are... <laughs> I I just... I'm just... I don't know. Um, Sturgis is pretty far. Yeah, so... Sturgis is where all of the girls take their shirts off, right? Isn't it? Don't know. No, it is. They, they're, they got the mud and everything in Sturgis. And there's a lot of... No, am I thinking? I'm thinking about Bourbon Street, huh? <laughs> they do that there. Have you been there, Red? Bourbon no. Street? You haven't done I've that? I've been to Bourbon Street, but I never saw anything. You never did the Mardi Gras? Never the Mardi Gras. You know, you crazy. You the Mardi Gras? Oh, yeah. You've been there for that? Oh, yeah. For Mardi Gras? I used to go there every year. Oh. When I was able to, I went. Yeah. It's like one crazy party with all the drugs and booze you ever want. Sounds like Burning Man out here in the desert. You see what happened at Burning Man with all the rain? These people, holy cripes, man. Yeah. So, hmm, Sturgis is a rub fest with merch peddlers. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a Sapphire. Where well, you guys are... There's a lot of outlaws in Marion. Uh, it's because monkeys hang from the bars, Adam. Oh, monkeys hang from the bars. Okay. Ape hangers. Gotcha. Except they aren't asking for beads. Yeah, <laughs> asking for beads in Sturgis, exactly. Oh, Sturgis is just a town. It has a river of trees for camping. Joseph Johnson. I, I just remember, I remember back in the day working in the... Um, uh, in the adult clubs, and some of the girls were and guys, uh, bikers, and uh, they used to, oh, Sturgis, Sturgis, Sturgis is going to Sturgis. I didn't even know where the hell it was, but <laughs> I know that there was some kind of wild, crazy motorcycle thing that happened there. So, yeah, Devin Morrell, I'm from South Dakota, and the girls get full of body paint painted up. Yeah, like they walk around with the body paints on and everything. It's, uh, yeah. This has to be a new thing. Back in my day, it didn't happen. <laughs> it was tattoos. Everybody had tattoos. Tattoos, yeah. Tattoos. The more ink you had, the more you were noticed. Jim Magnifici, I like watching a series called Full Throttle Saloon about Sturgis Area Bar that's by that name. Really? The series. Uh, it's a free uh, uh, the saloon, huh? It's Sounds free. good. Yeah, well, why not? I get laid more in 10 days of Sturgis than the whole rest of the year. <laughs> Arthur Dusheds Jackson. Arthur Dusheds, you got a severe problem. <laughs> get laid more 10 days of Sturgis than the whole rest of the year. Wow. Maybe I should take my wife to Sturgis. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Arthur Dusheds will be Oh, saying, my God, the man. The greatest. <laughs> Oh. Guy won the lottery out here. He came on running into the house. He said to his wife, he said, 
Honey, I hit the big one. I hit the big one. Finally, pack your bags. She said, for warm weather or cold weather. He said, I don't care. Just get out by five. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Oh, man. The crowd has the answer for you right here. Never take take old ladies or wives to any and all bike fests. No. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's rule number one about being a biker. Hey, brother, you want to <laughs> share? You don't want to share? Bump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to get your wife laid in Sturgis? Some of his grin. Poor Allie. Uh, problem with the mob is they all disappear and no one knows what they're into. Well, you know, again, you know, legitimate businesses are not a bad thing to be in. I mean, especially, you know, legitimate ones. You know, there were some politicians I heard about, and I'm just not going to mention any names. But when all of this uh, legalization of the marijuana back about you know, seven, eight years ago happened, there were a lot of heavy investments before it was legalized into licenses for dispensaries and for you know and and yeah and there was a lot of names political names tied to that and that's you know you kind of raise raise your eyebrows and go really i mean if it's not into business it's not into politics i mean it sure as hell isn't just running around on the street anymore that's yeah that's over um people don't even want to go out on the street anymore Devin morell adam you don't want to know what they do with cucumbers during the rally in Sturgis. Well, maybe you do. Really? <laughs> no, I don't. Kevin Moore, are you insinuating that they have salad while they're up there? They're... Uh, That's so funny. <laughs> Devon, thank you for the super, super sticker, guy. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph Johnson. Well, there have been times where the mob could be useful, but we did not know. Times the mob could be useful, we did not know. Yeah, well, people complain about change, and then, you know, change it is. Things happen. I live in Stickney, right off of Harlem. Saw a lot of deer in the preserve across the road. Um, well, Kraut, hide the cucumber. Oh, it's a magic trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a magic trick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So they, you guys are getting crazy. Come on. Come on. Tossing salad. Well, what else would you do with the cucumbers? You toss them in there with the, <laughs> with the uh, tomatoes and lettuce. Cherry, yes. Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. And, uh, Onion, avocado, onion. and onion, and then the vinegar, and yeah. Oof. <laughs> oh. there, oh, I love for cucumber. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, oh. man. <laughs> what like the that. hell, you guys? Mickey Grace. Yeah, what is love for cucumbers? <laughs> Apparently, you know, the audience has lost their minds and have gone completely into the gutter, Red. <laughs> Not a little bit, but completely into the gutter. Which I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't expect the audience to do anything other than that <laughs> on our show because that's what they always do. <laughs> yep, right into the gutter. So, man. Adam and Eve standing there in the garden. And he's like, Eve, he's like, did you throw my shorts into the salad again? <laughs> nun's standing there and she's getting her test, you know, to get into the become an official nun. And uh priest said to her, he's going to ask you a few questions. Uh, what's the first thing that, uh, that's the first thing that Eve said to Adam. And the nun scratched her head. She said, oh, she said, that's a hard one. He said, you're right. <laughs> we never had our minds no they 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 didn't 
Arthur Two Sheds Jackson, Joseph, when is the mob useful? Just wondering. Oh, Joseph Johnson wants to know what's going on. It depends on who you are. When was it useful, man? It was useful when, um, um, yeah, when was it useful? Answer that one. <laughs> uh, gives it depends a on who you are. Salad shooter. Salad shooter, huh? Wow. Sorry, I started the salad talk. Yeah, Devin's the one who started it. Sure is. The Kraut testing one. Devin Morrell. <laughs> Morelli, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, Devin. Uh, he started the salad talk. <laughs> He's the one who started it. Red. Yeah. So um, I hope everybody's been well. Seriously, because it's been it's been a couple of months since uh since we we were on uh on here together it was like first week was the crime tour i had one booked then it was like a slow week and i thought i don't want to shut down wednesday because i might get a tour and then i had a va appointment for jack where i try to get the they just called me to tell me they got to do blood work and now. your mother had surgery yeah my mom had some some uh some some uh some procedure done been looked at and you know so there's just a lot going on and uh you know a lot going on and you got to prioritize and um not that you guys aren't a priority but um you know every once in a while you gotta gotta sit back a little bit you know play some starfield <laughs> um the worst mob murder was of action jackson by Mad Sam and crew. Yes. Yeah, that was that's pretty bad. That wasn't that wasn't murder. That was a torture. That was that was a torture. It was a more a torture murder. <laughs> torture murder. Yeah. I don't think they expected him to live. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, is this going to be a regular thing? Talking about salad, Scott, or talking about doing mob <laughs> on a regular basis? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the comments come in a little delayed, so I just want to make sure we're on the right subject here, uh, Scott. So Chuck, Chuck you Farley, Chuck you Farley, uh, did they work out who the bodies in the barrels they found at Lake Mead dried up belong to? No, but they're still leaning towards that Johnny Pappas. So we'll my vote. I, I, you know, they they found another guy. We're able to find off of his DNA a genealogy match and figure out who he was. But this, this guy, they still don't know. Why not? It's a good damn question, Chuck U. Farley. And uh, welcome into the show. I've never read your name before, so I'm pretty good with, with remembering names. But anyway, um, yeah, I'd like to like to find out what, what's going on with that. So uh, have any of you seen that movie with Gene Hackman and Tommy Lee Jones? He plays a he plays a prisoner or something that gets out. And uh, it's like no, it's from 89, 1989. No, no, fugitive was in the 90s. Oh, I know the one you're talking. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Isn't it Gene Hackman and Tommy Lee Jones? The package. It's called the package. Yes. 1989. Have you anybody see that? Is that any good? He was big on the electronics, and he had his whole building set up for destruction at the end. Yeah, it's, got, it's got a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb. That's why I'm going, eh, is it worth watching, or is it, you know? I liked it. I liked it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking of what to do this evening, because uh, I'm going to make some dinner. I'm going to take some chicken, and I got this uh, red sauce. Some mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, the chicken breasts. Oh my God. And then I take the tortilla and I slice the <laughs> chicken breast. I lay that in there, a little bit of uh, onion in that, and then fold it up and put it in an air fryer. And then that crust is up the outside of the, the shell and it makes it, and you cut in all that cheese is all melting out of it. And yeah. That's what I've been, been screwing around with that air fryer. It's pretty good. Still there, Red? I'm here. Oh, okay. 
I'm giving you a chance to speak. Oh, okay. I mean, they've only been waiting for you for a month. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you about Geechee guy. There was a, a comedian out here, Geechee guy. He was pretty well, pretty well known. But he did. Uh, he was known for doing one-liners, and it was just one after another, after another, after another. And um, he set some world record or some six hundred and something jokes in an hour that he did. It's something like five or six jokes a minute. So you're talking ten seconds a joke, really, really fast stuff. One and, yeah, you want to hear one of his jokes? Yeah. Do you know why all women should masturbate with these two fingers? Only these two fingers? <laughs> I do. Because <laughs> they're my fingers. That's right. <laughs> that guy was hilarious. He was so hilarious. Um anyway it was the the las vegas monsoon man it, it was bad and that was another thing that that hit us in that um hillary coming up the coast which took out i had to cancel tours uh you know there were washouts and you the mean that hillary affected you in vegas yeah hillary finally got what she must have left uh <laughs> the east coast <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, yeah, again, a whole year of water came down in like a week. It was pretty crazy. So, but we're all good, you know, it's all good. You guys like the finger joke. Yeah, I knew you would. But you guys would be telling <laughs> I your friends. I love so you. Would tell to your friends. I cracked up bad. Why should all women masturbate with only these two fingers? That's right. Because they're mine. Now, don't say it any other way. Because that's the funniest way. Chuck you Farley, maybe the bodies belong to those who gave uh the gave the Las Vegas mob to her bad reviews. Maybe. <laughs> the bodies in the barrel out at Lake Mead, Fred? Yes. Yeah, that's what he's referring to. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> Hillary came in wet. <laughs> the fingers or the cucumber. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Here we go. Go. We're talking about red. They can't yeah. stop it. What yeah. happened to the mole people in the tunnels? That's sad, Scott H. Yeah, the, the, the people drowned in those tunnels. It's 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 awful. It really is. So what about the homeless that were in there? There so goes the, my home. The, the mole people, the homeless people in the tunnel. <laughs> tunnel people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Lake Mead barrel ride still a valid prize? Maybe pretty soon. Kraut, we'll see. So anyway, it's been fun, Red. And uh, it's good an to see you back, buddy. Hour came and went. It's good to see you. And uh, if all works out, well, well, actually, next Wednesday we won't because I'm uh, doing a, an appointment with the VA for Jack. Although that's at noon my time, so there may be time if I if the appointment goes smoothly and I can get back over here. Maybe we'll we'll get a get it in next week too. So I'm pretty sure it's noon. We'll find a way. We'll so find a way. Figure it out. Do a show Monday that I was supposed to do today on on helen brock and my involvement with helen brock yeah so it should be good awesome that's the candy lady yes all right well you're welcome guys it's good to see you good to see all of you and uh red see you next time thanks for coming by buddy thanks see you soon thanks for coming mm -hmm.